Whew. God, sunny day. Aha. I know what I'm going to do to relieve this so much heat. You know what's that? It's swimming. So let's go to the beach, guys. I'm on vacation every single day Cause I love my occupation Hey, I'm on vacation If you don't like your life Then you should go and change it Hey, I'm on vacation every single day Cause I love my occupation Hey, I'm on vacation every single day Every, every single day Yes, at last, here we are now at the beach. Whew. This with this kind of weather is really exhausting. Thank God that the sea is always there to help me relax. Whew. You know what? As I had observed, there are three important reasons or aspects why people love the sea. First is of course because of the water. Second is because of the sand and third is because of the sunlight This tree seems to be the complete package which makes up a sea or a beach However, there's a catch If you are a science student or a science enthusiast like me You could observe things that are beyond appreciating these three important aspects for example, the sea. Its waves simultaneously came by the shore, forming continuous wave patterns. Another one is the sand. By looking through it, you could instantly identify that it is an object, or the sand are little objects, and so. We could regard it as a particle. Another one is the sunlight. Obviously, we could immediately say that it is not a particle. But somehow, it is said to behave like waves. And so, that is why it is called an electromagnetic wave. Hmm... All of these ideas made me think that is it possible for a wave and a particle to work combined and create a very unique function? And if so, how? For some time, we had no light to behave as an electromagnetic wave. For this reason, light is also called an electromagnetic radiation. Light waves have both a wavelength, which is the distance from one tip to the other tip, and a frequency, which is the number of waves that pass by a point per unit time. Wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional with each other since the shorter the wave, the more of them that can go by per second, resulting in a much higher frequency. These variables are related by the following equation as illustrated above, in which C is the speed of light at about 300 million meters per second, and this is equivalent to the speed limit of the universe. The electromagnetic spectrum shows light of all different wavelengths, from gamma rays to radio waves, including this tiny sliver in the middle, which is the visible light, the light we can detect with our own eyes. The wave theory of light was very useful for a time, but it could not explain the photoelectric effect. When we say photoelectric effect, this was the observation that if a certain metal plate is irradiated with light, 
An electron is ejected which can be detected when it interacts with a positively charged wire or plate sensor. The incongruity was that the ability of light to eject an electron depends only on its frequency and not its intensity. So, if the beam was below a certain frequency, even a very intense beam with a lot of light could not eject an electron whereas above a certain frequency, even the faintest beam possibly could do it. This concept seems strange and then famous Albert Einstein solved this problem by extending a concept developed by Max Planck just five years prior. Planck proposed that energy is not continuous but rather it is quantized. That is, all energies are multiples of the smallest fundamental unit of energy which is what we know as the Planck energy. In fact, quantum theory went on to show that everything is quantized, space and time too. So, you can't infinitely subdivide them. You'll eventually get to a smallest thing that can't be divided further. Einstein extended what Planck said about energy and he rationalized that light must also be made of quanta which he called photons. He referred photons as the particles of light. This now explained the photoelectric effect because an electron is ejected when it's struck by a singular photon with sufficient energy. It only takes one photon, so even the faintest beam above a certain frequency will be able to do it. But if none of them are of that minimum energy, no matter how many photons strike the sample, an electron will not be ejected. It was found that energy of a photon can be given by the following equation as illustrated above and it is according to the frequency of photon and Planck's constant. We now have to accept the fact that light obeys wave particle duality meaning it is both a particle and a wave at the same time. Confused? You should be. This is the first discovery in a series that brought about the quantum revolution, completely changing the landscape of physics and how we view the universe. Newton's laws no longer reign supreme in the world of the very small, and the universe became much more stranger almost overnight thanks to Einstein and others that were inspired by him. Double slit experiment shows how particles work as both particles and waves at the same time or what we call wave particle duality and lead the scientists to study quantum mechanics. It was first conducted by the English physicist and physician Thomas Young in 1801. In his now classical double slit experiment, he used photon, the smallest particle of light. The light passes through a plane with two slits and striking a screen beyond. He expected to see just two regions, collection of photons based on the form of two slits but the result is an interfe uh, interference pattern or a series of light and dark bands which indicates presence of overlapping waves. The light bands, constructive interference, come from the waves reinforcing each other, and the path difference from two slits to the band is an integral number of wavelengths of the light, while the dark bands, destructive interference, are produced when waves interact with each other and cancel out leaving nothing. The path difference is half integral number of wavelengths. Actually, his experiment proves wave characteristic of light and shows that a single light beam breaks into two sources or uh, diffracts which occurs when waves encounter an obstacle. 
the two slits. This lead to the strange result of quantum physics. The single photon interferes with itself. In this wave-like behavior brought us to the wave function, or the width of band being a function of the frequency or probability of the light. For low intensities, the wave interf interference of a single photon to be related to its position can be described as a certain probability. Where the screen is dark, the probability of the photon being there is zero, while the brightness shows the probability is higher, where photon is more likely to be observed. It is only a matter of probability because as the scientists tried to observe what actually happens, the interference pattern is destroyed that shows the photon did not went into two slits at the same time. The result remains the same even after several trials and no one can explain why. So the photon wave packets position cannot be known in this experiment but can be predicted with a, a probability function. Therefore, functions have no simple meaning as there are a lot of possibilities for waves. They can reflect, refract, interfere, and diffract. Later, Maxwell shows that light is a wave of oscillating electric and magnetic field. However, in 1905, Einstein suggests that light is made up of particles. So, the idea that light is both particle and wave was born, until D. Broglie conducted an experiment just like Young's that shows the particles must also display wave-like behavior and in general, matter is both particle and wave. These have shown that the wave-particle duality is true. This is the modern version of double slit experiment. Wave function was also used to describe a single electron wherein the amplitude of the wave function at any point is related to the probability of finding the particle within a certain volume. Only that electron was used instead of light, but same result, interference pattern. Electrons interfere just like photons, thus have wave-like behavior. Again, particles are not sharply localized as the experiment cannot be sharply observed. However, through a measurement, we can interpret that a particle is in more than one place at the same time. That's it, the double slit experiment.